All right, so today we are celebrating 15 subscribers. And if you've actually been paying attention during some of my previous videos, you'll know that I talked about doing this video a little bit to uh, uh, show some Java coding for a program that is hopefully going to edit my videos from now on. Assuming that uh, we don't make any mistakes. And the program we write now will actually edit the video we're recording right now. So, kind of cool. So, I'll show you an example real quick. Now, you can hear me typing. That's what my keyboard sounds like. So, you'll know that I am not uh, doing these commands. Uh, when this plays. So we are going to run the program and pass in the file name of test.mp4 which is just a three second clip to make this quick. So if we hit enter it should boot up DaVinci Resolve which is a free program that I use to edit the videos. And as you can see, the robot is going along, importing the clip to the timeline. And now it's going to export the audio, get the formatting right, and rendering that audio. And now it's on a timer. So we're going to have to wait a few seconds until it eventually opens up Audacity, fingers crossed. And there it goes. Opening up Audacity, it should import the clip, highlight it all, apply the de to make it more ASMR friendly, export the audio, Quit Audacity, put the audio back into the video, delete the original audio, and finally export the video using the format we need for YouTube. Um, we do it in 1440p because 4K would just take too long for an ASMR video. And there you have it. We now have a finished product that's ready to upload to YouTube. So, hopefully this doesn't take too long. Um, I've never done a video like this before. Uh, I think in the future, if this goes well, I'll enhance it to also upload it to YouTube for me. So, let's get started. Don't save the changes to this get rid of this. So we're going to bring up Eclipse. And now this isn't going to be, you know, a complete beginner's Java guide, but I'm just going to ramble about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Uh, this is mostly for ASMR. So if you're here for coding help, hopefully you kind of already know how to write a Hello World program. So we'll do a new project and we'll call it Vid Helper. We will create a package we tools vid helper finish. And we will create a new class called driver. So if you're new to Java, here's what we can do. Every class is going to have a public stack with main. And if we do a system out print hello world, we can now run this. And as you can see out in the console, we have hello world. 
So that is your quick and dirty Hello World program in Java, the basics. But we're not writing Hello World. We want to code a program that's going to edit our videos for us. So we still need a main function. So this is the main method. First thing we want to do is pass the file name into our program. So if args length doesn't equal one system out print program expects exactly one argument, which is the file name. And this is mostly a note to myself if I don't use this program for years and then suddenly can't figure out why it's not working. And if we don't get a file name, we do not want to run the program. Else system out print running this clip. static context, so we will try driver, driver equals new driver, and we'll pass it our file name, and then we will run it. Now we have a program that accepts one argument at runtime, stores it as the name of the clip. Okay, so we're making slow progress. Now the hero of our program is going to be the Java robot class. And that is basically a library um, that someone much smarter than me has written. That will allow us to simulate uh, mouse movement, key presses, things like that. Okay, so we're going to robot robot. We can do everything in the constructor. And we're gonna have to throw an exception. This is the constructor. Initial. 
initialize some stuff. Because that's what we're doing. Test method. And run will be our main program logic. And the reason we have this test method is so that we can test smaller pieces of the program here so to step through everything. Because if we have to test, you know, there's no point in repeating stuff that we already know that works. So we'll test little pieces in here and gradually add them to this. This is just going to be one long method, so not really a proper object-oriented coding, but easy to read. You know, when I work, you don't necessarily want to have perfect academic Java. You want a human being to be able to easily look at your code and figure out what's going on. Unless you're doing like real-time systems or stuff like that, but I'm not doing that. And I'm definitely not doing that for this video. <laughs> okay, so we have our robot. And the first thing we need to do is open DaVinci Resolve, which is the free video software I use. Um, so to do that, we're going to make a little helper method down here. Let's call it make it first. Public void open app. And this will take a string app path. And this will throw an eye out. to import. So this is a helper method to open a Windows application. This will let us open DaVinci Resolve and Audacity and maybe uh, Brave which is just a version of the Chrome browser that I use. Um, if we get to that at a later date. Uh, all right, what are we doing? Open app. So file, file equals new file app path. We instantiate the file, which needs to be imported. And when I'm clicking this in Eclipse, it's adding all the imports up to the top of the file, which, you know, luckily are standard Java libraries, so you don't have to download any jars or stuff like that. Again, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I apologize. Uh, if I went through and explained every little thing, this video would be three hours long. And it would be clear to you that I don't really know what I'm talking about, so... We want to maintain the illusion that I am a good programmer. Get desktop, open file, and that's already our file. So now this method, when we call it with some app path, will open any Windows application, assuming our path is correct. So now in the run method, open the path to DaVinci, but first we need to import our variables. So I'm not going to waste time. Uh, I know it's kind of a running joke that Java tutorials, you know, people just paste in large blocks of code and say, you know, just do this. I'm pasting in variables. That's it. And if you want to be a helpful programmer, you name things what they are. You don't call them X, Y, Z. You call them path to audacity, path to audacity directory. 
So we will use all of these variables and there'll be a bunch more that we pasted. So, as you can see, I have a variable here called path to DaVinci and it is the absolute path to the executable file that will launch DaVinci. So now all we need to do is open app path to DaVinci. dyslexia so you have to excuse me <laughs> what did I do oh da Vinci that's what I did sorry okay now we have to throw this and now we should have a program that when we press the play button didn't add an argument <laughs> that's on me so we'll go to See, that's why we put that there. Program expects exactly one argument. Now we know what's wrong. Run conventions. Uh, I think it's going to be a program argument, and it's going to be test.mp4 is our little test clip. So now all our program does is open DaVinci. So this is where we'll start using our test method. So as you can see, we get to here. And how do we get past this screen? I press the enter key. So we have the first task for our robot to do, which is to press the enter key. Uh, but we don't want it to press the enter key right away because, you know, computer she needs a little time to open the application so we're going to give her plenty of time and we're going to wait and then start a new DaVinci project and we wait by doing thread sleep in milliseconds 8,000 which is going to be 8 seconds probably more than we need to but Maybe I'm browsing Reddit and uh, I don't know, zipping some files uh, on my other monitor. And this is running at the same time. Realistically, I wouldn't be doing anything because the Java robot is going to be taking over the mouse and keyboard. But just in case she's thinking extra hard, maybe Windows is doing something in the background. We give her plenty of time. And then we will have to press the enter key. And how do we press the enter key? Well, we are going to write some helper methods for that. And the first one is going to be public void press key. like to sleep in between a key press and release just because I find that uh, it's more consistent. Probably doesn't make a difference but I like to have little sleeps in there especially when you're pressing multiple keys. Um, I wish it would let us throw this exception automatically but I guess we will type it manually. Throws interrupt that's right. Okay. So now we have a helper method to press release a key. So now every time we want to press a key, we don't have to type these three lines. We can we can just type press key and then give it a key. But while we're down here, I'm going to 
write some more helpers that we need. Press two keys. I bet you can guess what this is going to do. Which is why we name the methods what they do. Always code like that. Even if you don't know Java, you can guess what this is going to do. Press three keys. Key one, and key two, and key three. And yeah, what are we going to do? So when we press two keys, we want to press the first key. See, let me do it that time. And then, without releasing key number one, we press key number two. And then robot key release. Key two. And release key one. So if we were doing, you know, Control C for copy. We press Control, press C, release C, release Control, which is what you do as a human being. You just don't think about it that much. And we will keep up our comments for nice clean code. Helper method to press release two keys. We're going to press key number three and release key number three. So this would be like control, alt, delete, release, delete, release, alt, release, control. All right, you're probably asleep by now, which is fine. I know I would be and I have been in lectures in undergrad. Eh, maybe not so much for coding, because I thought that was fun, but calculus, definitely asleep. Uh, da, da, da. All right, so uh, I think there's one more we want to print do, which is public void press key n times int key int Just a, a helper method to press one key n times. If you're not a math person, n times just means any number of times. That's not one. I mean, you could do it one time, but that would be a little silly. So we'll have our for loop to i equals zero i is less than or equal to n i plus plus and every time we're going to sleep for a very short while and press key So now you can see from within press key and times we're calling our press key method. So got methods within methods here. Fun stuff. Alright, we have so very much to do. And it's already been 25 minutes. That's okay. Uh, let's go back up. 
so the first thing we want to do is wait and then start a new project. So we are going to press key, key event, key can enter. And these are just the key codes that correspond to each key that the robot is going to press. Now you can see if we hit run, we're going to open up DaVinci and the eight second timer is going on in the background and then we press the enter key. Now we have a new project. Now instead of running through all this every time, we're going to change this run to test and we're going to give ourselves three seconds before the stuff kicks in, throw our interrupted exception. Now any new stuff before we put down here, we're going to test it. So first thing we're going to do is go to the edit pane, which is down here, because we need to import our clip. So to do that, we are going to go to edit thread. All right, here's where we need some variables. I'm going to paste in this variable. Short delay, just so we know what this number is. It means something to us now. We just define it as 400, so a little bit less than half a second. And now this is going to be scary. This is going to be like a meme. Don't get overwhelmed. These positions correspond to the X and Y coordinates on my screen of buttons within DaVinci. So if you want to code something like this that doesn't have an API, an application program interface, if this had an API, you know, I could just do DaVinci dot open clip, but I can't. I have to do it through Java robots simulating a human. These are positions of buttons within Audacity and DaVinci. Add to render queue, audio, drag, edit pane, deesser. So I've already done the annoying part that takes the longest, which is get these locations and store them as variables. We're not going to bore you with that. We're going to bore you with plenty of stuff in this video, but one of them's not going to be that. So we're going to go to the edit pane. So we will have our thread sleep short delay as we normally do. And now we're going to need one last helper function to move our mouse. Uh, we, that's not true. We have more helper functions. Public void move mouse int array x, y. Because we are passing in integer arrays of size 2 that hold the x and y position. That's the only reason I'm calling this xy, because that's literally what it is. Don't use xy. If, you know, if you're using number of dogs, call it number of dogs. Don't call it x. Robot. Mouse move. xy. The first number in that array, which is at position 0. The second number in that array, which is at position 1. Java arrays start at position 0. The more you know. And this is a helper method to move the mouse to some position x, y on the screen. So another thing to think about is if for some reason you're trying to duplicate this on your own screen, I have a 1440 display. So if you're in regular HD 1080p or you're in 4K, it's not going to work or you're in ultra wide, or you're in some weird thing that isn't 16 by 9. It's not going to work, because your positions will be different. 
there are programs you can download to, you know, give you the current XY position of your mouse, save you a little bit of time. I'm not going to cover that in this video. And while we're here, we might as well do, I think this is our last helper method, public, public mouse click mute button. And we're just going to robot mouse press. but we meant press. And then we have a helper method to press release a mouse button. It's just to save us a line of code, but you know, when we're doing a bunch of mouse clicks, one line of code is helpful because it'll be more like 20 or 30. Uh, da, da, da. Let's go back up to test. So we have our, we have a lot of pieces in now we can get cranking on the actual program. Thread, sleep, short delay. Move mouse, which is our helper method that we just wrote. Position, edit, paint, which is our variable up top that we defined already. So now the mouse is hovering in theory over the edit pane. We're just going to copy these. I'm not going to type them all out. Sorry, guys. Sorry, fans of typing sounds. There's going to be plenty of typing. Mouse click input event button one. And I know what you're thinking. How do you have all this stuff memorized? I mean, one, I'm looking at my notes, and two, I've done it so many times that I just, I know it. I automate a lot of stuff. But it all starts from going online and saying how to simulate mouse press in Java. Then I Google it, go on Stack Overflow, I take the answer. And eventually, you know, you just kind of start remembering the stuff. But knowing how to code is one thing. If you forget how to do a specific thing, it doesn't really matter. Nobody cares. As long as you know the basic structure and you can Google the rest for yourself, you're a good programmer. But once you start programming, you quickly realize that you are not a good programmer and never will be. I look at stuff that I wrote, you know, three months ago and I think, what idiot came up with this? And then I realize that I worked on it. I go, oh. So, test. We are already in our project, so we have a three second delay. It should go to the edit pane, so. Click that, see what happens. Boom, it went to the edit pane and it clicked it. Beautiful. This code is ready to graduate to the run method. And now it is part of our main program, but we won't run our main program until we're ready to go. The next thing we're gonna do is Open clip import explorer and grab our delay that we put in front of every instruction. So, because give the application time to react. And now we are going to press two keys, and those keys are. Invent. Right. Okay. What is it? Control. Yep. Yeah. Invent. BK. Not BK. Not Burger King. I. K. 
Control I for import after we import the clip. We need to copy the clip path into the paste buffer. So we need to define some more variables. Because the path to the clip is going to change. So let's grab the rest of these from my notes here and paste them right here. And we're getting yelled at because we need to grab them from here. And if anyone is actually watching this, you know, I can post the GitHub link to the actual code. That's not a problem. Some more variables here. Path to clip directory explains itself. Path to audio directory explains itself. The rest we've initialized down here. And what else do we need? We need to get the clipboard. And what that's going to allow us to do is to simulate, you know, copying stuff from our program to the clipboard to paste it. So, after we open the Clip Explorer, we are going to copy the clip path to the paste buffer. How do we do that? Selection is already a string that we've defined. String selection, excuse me. It's an object that we use for this method only. Path to clip. And clipboard set contents. Selection. Selection. This is essentially copying something from inside the program so that we can paste it physically with control V. And now that we've got the clip, we are going to paste clip path into address bar. So we will sleep again for our short delay, give it some time to think. We're going to press two keys again, but as you probably know, paste is not control I, it's control V. Open the Clip Explorer, copy the path, paste the path on a three second delay. So we test it, run, quick switch over the tab, it opens, it pastes. Okay, last thing we need to do, whoops, should have remember that is press enter so we add open clip. we just have to press the enter button let's try that one more time it's gonna open up paste enter and look our video clip with the name of test, which is what we ran at the start, so we can dynamically run this for any video clip, is in our project. Now it's starting to look like a little bit of a Java program here. So this has done well. It graduates to the run method. Congratulations, little snippet of code. As you can see, this thing is going to grow and grow the more stuff that we do. But, you know, we're doing good code, we're commenting it, so even somebody who doesn't know what they're looking at can kind of tell what's going on. Maybe. It's hard to put yourself in a place of not knowing how to code when you've been doing it for so long. Alright. 
What's the next thing we want to do? Uh, it's odd that it didn't ask us to change the project frame rate because normally it does that. Vinci resolve. New project. Control I. Test. Open. Okay, change the project frame. Rate. That's what we're looking for. So we just want to hit enter to do that. But this should be in the edit tab. So we're just gonna add we don't need to really test this. Hit enter to change the project frame rate to 60 frames per second. Because, you know, if we're playing in 60 frames per second, you bet you I'm gonna let you enjoy glorious 60 frames per second on your smartphone, most likely, if you support it. Now, the next thing we need to do is right click. So, we have our delays, we move the mouse to the position of the clip, and we press button 3, which is the right mouse button, and then we will, I'm just pasting in blocks of clip now, because this video is getting super long. We add the clip to the timeline by moving the mouse to the position of the drop-down menu that says clip to timeline. Remember, I've already gotten these positions on the screen. So we're right-clicking the clip, insert selected clips to timeline. And let's see how we do. Come over here, and robot is going to right-click. Insert to timeline. Great. Cancel. And we have to create the timeline with a press of the enter key. And our code. We'll test it. Insert selected clips. Okay, now you see how the wheel is spinning here? This means, so that worked, which is great. But we need to give a few seconds to set up the timeline. And we are going to sleep for five seconds. This code has graduated to the run method. Now we need to, our next step is going to be to go to the deliver pane. Our goal is to export the audio, so we have to uncheck this on the deliver pane from the edit pane. So, we come back over, and then we will switch to the audio tab. We come back over here. You can see between every instruction we have a short delay. We're going to the deliver pane clicking on it. We're going to the export video button and clicking on it. We're going to the audio tab and clicking on it. Let's see it in action. Deliver. Export. Audio. Boom. We're on the audio tab. This code has graduated to the run method. Next, we need to come over here, set the format to wave, because that's the easiest to edit in Audacity. Set the bit depth to 32, which I'm not sure matters, but we're going to do the highest quality anyway. And then we'll add it to the render queue. So, big barcode here. 
we are going to the codex select, selecting wave, clicking. We are going to the bit depth drop down, going down to 32, clicking. Going to the add to render key button and clicking that. Let's see in action. Boom, wave, boom, 32, add to render key. As you can see, that dialog pops up. So I guess we'll test all this at one time. Okay, this is going to be a big block, but I'm going to talk you through it. So that dialog pops up because it wants us to name the audio file. Now, if you didn't know this, pressing Control L will jump you to the address bar in a Windows Explorer pane. This is a Windows Explorer pane. So we're going to jump to the address bar, copy the path of our audio directory, which is the directory where we export our audio. I'm going to paste that there. Enter. We're going to tab down till we get to the file selection. Copy the name of our audio file, which we have invented or extracted from our clip. It's going to be our test.mp4 is going to have an audio name of test.wave. And then we're going to render the audio. Seeing it all in action. Wave. It's already set. That's fine. Add to render queue. We jumped to the directory. We tab down to the file. And then we render it. Something happened. Weird happened there where it too far. I think I actually did accidentally hit the tab key with my finger. But that's okay. This code has graduated to the run method. thing we want to do is uh, we need to get our delays so did some tricky math here uh, we need these variables again I'm sorry for pasting in code but it's been 50 minutes so we're just going to talk through I want to do this all in one video. Now, there is no easy way without downloading some weird dependencies to get the length of a video clip from Windows into Java, which I find annoying because when you open up A Windows Explorer pane, you can clearly see the length of these video files. So, I wish there was an easy way to say, you know, file get length, but promise, promise you there isn't. There's an easy way to get the size though. We can use the size to guesstimate the length. So, we get the file size in kilobytes. And then we have an equation that I have extrapolated by plotting points. You know, I have my old videos saved, and I know. Let's see if we can. This is where math really does come in handy. Sorry, guys. So we have. A line graph and we have video length and size it's very difficult to draw <laughs> wow 
That does not say anything. Let's try this. So this is a graph of length of the video and size of the video. So I have a bunch of videos on my PC from you know recording these videos. And I went to an online calculator and plotted the length versus the size and came up with something like this. And what the calculator did was find a line of best fit through those points. Which means I can plug in any size. So, you know, if I record a new video and it's the long, in this one, it's the longest one I've ever recorded, we can. straight up till we meet this line and get this point right here and come across and guess what the file size is going to be. Make sense? Probably not. But that's what I did. So the online calculator gave me this equation. 0.00019 times file size in kilobytes minus 28.07071. Probably could have made that 28 and it wouldn't have changed anything. That gets you a negative number if the clip is too small. So I just said if clip length is a negative number, just pretend it's 60 seconds long. And from here, we can guess how long it's going to take the audio to render how long it's going to take Audacity to render its effects, how long it's going to take to render the video. So as you can see, Audacity takes almost no time at all. A thousand times 0 0.03. Um, the audio takes a bit longer. A thousand times 0.3, bigger number. A thousand times 0.37 to render the video, because that's the most uh, exhaustive task. Anyway, that's the kludgy way that I came up with to estimate how long it's going to take everything to render so that the program doesn't start doing all this stuff while it's still rendering. It's been working so far, so it's ugly, but it works. If you are a professional developer watching this, I apologize for the atrocities that I'm committing. So, where were we? We've just rendered the audio, so now we are going to wait for the audio to render. <clears throat> and once we've done that, will open up. Uh, we need to change this to test. Test.wave. Yeah, we want to replace it. Add to render queue. Set that up. Okay. So, next on the list is we're going to open Audacity, import the audio. Missing the path to Audacity. That's fine. I can grab those variables now that you know what I'm about. Wait a second. Okay, there we go. Um, we're going to open Audacity. We are going to 
Control Shift I to import some audio. Copy the name of the audio and paste it and hit enter. Uh, and we have our sleeps in here, so let's see what happens when we run it. We opened Audacity. We imported the audio. Beautiful. Which means, oh, wrong one. Which means that this code has graduated to, you guessed it, the run method. Da, 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 da. What do we do next? So we have the audio in there. Okay, now we need to... Let's just get rid of the rest of Audacity. Big block of code coming in. But I'm gonna walk you through it, it's okay. We're gonna select all, because in Audacity you can only apply clips, you apply effects to stuff that's selected. So we're going to select the whole clip, go to effect, de-esser. How do we do that? We move the mouse and click, move the mouse and click to these positions we've already defined. Hit enter to hit apply. We wait for the calculated amount of time for the audio to apply its effect. Control Shift E exports our audio. Enter. Wait a second. And then we quit Audacity. We tab to the right to say we don't want to save. And we hit enter. Let's see it in action. Might run into a problem if there's already an existing clip out there. You can see we applied the de -esser. Okay kind of did everything. Um, I thought it was going to run into a problem because uh, we already had a clip with that name out there, so it got a little screwed up. I promise you it works. You saw it in the beginning of the video. That graduates to our main method. And we are wrapping up here. So now that we've quit Audacity, in theory, the DaVinci window will be back in front. So, this is the tricky part. Took me a while to figure this out. Uh, what do we want to do? Go to Edit Pane, click Timeline, jump to the beginning. Left click the audio, drag it to the timeline, delete old audio. Sure. This is a big one too. So now that we are back in DaVinci, we need to jump back over to the edit pane. And when you have a really long clip, this timeline is going to be all the way out here. And if you try to paste your audio in, it's not going to be lined up. So we need to click the timeline. And then press the semicolon key to jump to the beginning. Uh, which isn't working because the clip is too short. Anyways, we click, not click, the timeline. Jump to the beginning of the timeline. Open the Import Explorer. Copy the pen. Copy, yeah, the name of our rendered audio, paste it, Dra and then we left click and drag the audio down and delete the old audio. So if we run just the test, we'll pretend we're still on the delivery pane. Let's see what happens. We jump to the edit pane, to the beginning of the timeline, drag the audio down, delete the other audio. Beautiful. So now we have a clip with our new audio from Audacity that has all the hissing S sounds kind of silenced.
so that it's not so harsh on your ears. Because I slither like a snake sometimes, I apologize. That's really the only effect I put on these videos. Maybe in time that'll change, but for now nobody's really complained. This code has graduated to, you guessed it, the run method. Now we go to the other pane, set the code up, da, da, da. Yeah. Hit resolution. Let's grab this. This one looks big, but it's really not doing too much, I promise. We go to the deliver pane in here. We go to video. We need to select video again because now we're not just doing audio, we're exporting video too. We're going to set the format to MP4, set the codec to 265, set the resolution to custom, and we're going to edit it to 2560. We're pressing the numbers. Not the best way to do that, but that's the way I did it. 1440. That's the resolution. If we test this now, we jump to the deliver, hit video, export video, MP4, 265, custom resolution, 2, 2. Oh, that's wrong. What happened there? Press the key twice. Is my key helper method messed up? Press key. No, it's fine. Oh, I leaned on it with my hand. Huh. Idiot. We will just fix that. Nothing to see here. And pretending that we didn't see those mistakes, this has graduated to the run method. We will get our last block here. We'll just paste it right in the run method. The last thing we need to do is name the finished clip using the path to it, add it to the render queue, render the video, which we've done already. And then I have a wait here. Video to wait for the video to render because you know I'm thinking about the future. I'm thinking about opening up YouTube, you know, typing a title for it. Uh, not gonna automate a thumbnail, but you know, maybe I record a video one day, I just run this program, and I can come back the next day and quick make a thumbnail. It's not as much work for me. The less work we have to do the, for these, the better. Am I right? Now, our program is done, but we can't run it from the command line yet until we do this. Export jar file. And we're going to call this vidhelper.jar. Um, if you work in Eclipse, and you're doing this for a living, please make sure you export the source files and resources uh, so that somebody else on your team doesn't have to decompile the job code and guess at what you're doing. Because generally, you lose comments when you decompile Java. And sometimes you even lose variable names, which means this might be called a, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, 2, all the way down. You would have no idea what these mean. Make sure this is top. Rant over. Okay, so we exported that. And now, if we go 
to here, we see this is tonight. We exported this at 755. This is our jar file. But now we need to make a batch file to actually run it. So basically says we have a variable called arg1 and we are assigning it to the first thing that's passed in from the command line. set home equals c. This is where we live. Now you know my first name. My identity is out there. Unless I changed it. Ooh. Somebody using Brave Browser might not have a real first name. And set class path equals class path home home. Java and the class we are going to run, which is this package, com e tools bid helper driver, because we are running the driver class. Well, yeah. And we are going to pass it our argument, which is going to be our file name. And we will save this as vid helper all files dot that. Save. Now we have an executable. We're dangerous. We can get out of Eclipse. And should we take it for one more test run? Get rid of our finished video. Get rid of our test. Get rid of our test. So now you can see in our Ryujinx directory we have a test video that's three seconds long. So if I open up the command prompt and I run vid.bat and I pass in test.mp4. If I wanted to render, you know, the 17th episode of Pokemon Legends Arceus, I would just type in PLA episode 17, EP17, excuse me, dot mp4, and we can wrap with that. We hit enter. It calls our Java program. You see the output is now on the console. Uh oh. Cancel. Cancel. We already had this open, which was a mistake. Let's just clear DaVinci and make sure we don't have any projects that are going to conflict with anything. Let's try this again. Can't have DaVinci open when we're running this program. The program is not smart enough to know that it's open. Try this again. Now it's going to open DaVinci for us. It's going to hit enter. It's going to import the clip, change the frame rate, add it to the timeline, go to the deliver pane. It's going to only export the audio in the format that we want. It's going to save the audio in the spot that we want. 
with the name that we want, test.wave. It's rendered. Now it's waiting for it to finish because it thinks it's a 60 second clip because it had a negative time for that thing we talked about. After a brief pause, we should be opening Audacity. There we go. We should be importing the audio from that video, selecting all, adding our effects, waiting for the effects to finish rendering, exporting the audio, quitting Audacity, importing the new audio, dragging it to the timeline, getting rid of that old audio, and finally setting up the video for the settings that we want for YouTube, which is 2560 by 1440. Saving it to the spot we need, adding it to the render queue, and voila. We've just prepared a three second clip that is ready for YouTube. Um, it's been an hour and ten minutes. I hope to God this video recorded. <laughs> I'll be so sad. And more importantly, I hope that you either fell asleep or found it enjoyable. If you made it this far, bless you. See you next time for our, who knows, 30 subscriber special. I don't want to get too optimistic, but thank you to the 15 individuals who uh, inspired me to talk for an hour and 12 minutes.